What's up guys? Thanks for coming to Gaming Canada with me today. I have a brand new segment for you and it's going to be titled This Week in Homebrew. Please keep watching. This week in homebrew is going to consist of 3DS and Wii U homebrew updates within the community and basically any news going on that I don't get to make a full video about. And I will kind of condense these all into episodes for a Friday or a Saturday. And that way you can watch them and if you missed anything then you're going to get all caught up really quick. It's going to be super simple and I'm thinking it's going to be a good idea. I want you guys to go down to the comments afterwards and let me know what you thought of the video and if I should keep doing them. So we're going to get this started. I'm going to begin with 3DS updates. So anything that you need to get updated on your 3DS. And then we're going to go into 3DS exploit news and rumors, anything that's going on in there. And then we'll jump over to Wii U exploits, news, and that sort of thing. If you want to jump right over to Wii U, I'm going to put a timestamp in the description. Go ahead and click that and learn all you can about the Wii U. Go down to the comments afterwards and tell me what you thought. To start us off with the 3DS updates, Aurora Wright released an 8.1.1 update to Luma 3DS. If you didn't get that already, I'm going to put a link to my video in the description showing you how to easily update to it. If you happen to be on an older version of Luma, say Luma 7.1 and Boot 9 Strap 1.0, I'm also going to put links in the description so that you can update your Boot 9 Strap to 1.2, and this will allow you to run 8.0 or higher versions of Luma 3DS. Up next is a new release of God Mode 9 version 1.3.1. Now you might say, where did 1.3.0 go? We didn't even get a chance to update to it yet. And that was because the day before, a new release came out with some RTC clock support. And essentially, there was a little bit of a flaw in it. We're going to say it was derped. And the last release broke a very important fat mounting feature, which led to the guide no longer working. So luckily that was fixed very quickly. There is also a new feature that I think is pretty cool is you can change the brightness of the screen using the volume slider. So we're going to check that out in a minute here after we get through the rest of the updates. And I'll show you how to update to everything that we're looking at here. All the links will be in the description. It'll be super simple. Up next is a release to FBI 2.4.11. Now this didn't do a ton of stuff other than fix a couple of bugs and added a new banner model and startup animation to match the new logo that was implemented in 2.4.10. So we're going to show you how to update to this within FBI. It's super easy if you're using the 3DS X or the CIA version. They both work with the built-in updater. For all the Pokemon fans out there, PKSM has had a pretty substantial update. Now, it basically added a bunch of wireless features that are based on PK Hex. You can see you can check the legality of Pokemon wirelessly. You can also wirelessly inject Wonder Cards. That is pretty cool. You also have a wireless storage system. You can send in bulk the PK files into a virtual storage to avoid injecting stuff into your main save file. I've heard uh, when you shut off your system that this virtual storage kind of disappears so it's kind of like a one-time use thing. Don't quote me on that though. There is also a just a ton of random stuff going on here. If you want to check it out I'll put a link in the description. I don't do a ton of Pokemon modding or anything like that so this might serve some of you. I might end up making a video about it. We will see very shortly. On to the exploit news. You can see a Hedge has posted a little bit of a shout out to this person. I don't even want to murder your name, so I'm not even going to try. Dem Eviler. Oh, geez, I tried it anyway. Basically, they got a proof of concept NTR boot hacks working all on their own. As you can see here, if we will click this, ta da! They got the safe B9S installer up and there are the stack of magnets tricking it into thinking it's closed. How wild is that? That is pretty cool that someone could do that on their own. For the unaware, NTR boot hacks is essentially a flaw that is in all of the 3DS systems, in all the families, the 2DS and everything. And it's basically a fail safe for Nintendo. If you have a brick system and maybe you sent it to them, they can unbrick it by using a DS flash cart that has basically a firmware on it. 
and you can hold a button combination while having the lid down and that is what the magnets are for to spoof the lid being down and then boot on the system and instead of trying to boot the normal firmware it will boot from the DS flash cart and essentially you could use this to boot into a safe B9S installer and install boot 9 strap onto your systems without using a hard mod or the DSiWare hacks transfer. So that is what NTR Boot Hacks is. I'll put a link in the description if you want to learn more about NTR Boot Hacks. It isn't released yet, but if we jump over here to the 3DS Hacks subreddit, you can see that Hedge and Dem 3 deem whatever it is, I'm so sorry for butchering your name, is thinking about trying to get this NTR Boot Hacks out the door soon. So that is pretty interesting. I hope you guys are prepared for that. Last and certainly not least is a couple of posts by NBA Yo saying that Flipnote Studio 3D is pretty awesome, but before playing it, you should try out RPG Maker FES Player. Now you can get this free from the eShop. Now I don't know why he'd want to get that other than this post that he also made that, you know, it speaks for itself. So if you guys are interested in other homebrew exploits, maybe you should look into these tweets. We're going to start on updating these few programs that were released this week, and then we'll jump over to the Wii U news. To update to the latest version of God Mode 9, insert your SD card into your computer or go ahead and open up micro SD management. We're going to go over to 1.3.1 here and download God Mode 9.zip. I'll meet you guys down in our downloads. I've got my downloads on the right and my micro SD card on the left. I'm going to go ahead and open up Luma and then I'm going to open up the payloads folder and I'm going to go ahead and just delete God Mode 1.2.8.firm. That was the most recent version I have, 1.2.7-C. I'll put a link in the description in case you're curious about it. It is how I inject CIAs into Face Raiders as well as AR games. So I'm going to be keeping it around. I'm just going to go ahead and delete the newest God Mode here. Now in my downloads, I'm going to right click this God Mode and I'm going to 7-zip extract it to here. Now we're going to go ahead and drag God Mode 9 dot firm into our payloads folder on our SD card. And then we're going to go back to the root of the SD card and just drag this GM9 folder into the root of your SD card. And that will merge it with the current GM9 folder that's already there. There probably isn't anything new in it, but we're just going to replace, replace all the files in the destination anyway. Go ahead and safely eject your SD card or exit out of micro SD management. And you've now updated God Mode 9 to 1.3.1. I'm going to try out the new volume slider feature real quick here and see how it adjusts the brightness while in God Mode 9. And then we'll get FBI loaded up. So here we are loaded into the new version of God Mode 9. Now you see if I mess with the slider switch here. Turns the screen, screen brighter. Turns it darker. The only thing about this is if you happen to keep your volume slider always at the lowest level, I think it keeps the screen at the lowest level. We're going to have to set up the real-time clock in God mode now, so if you're on this main screen, go ahead and press the home button. Now you want to go down to more, and then two up from the bottom, you'll see set RTC date and time. Go ahead and hit A on that. Now go ahead and enter in your date and time. My time is now set. I'm going to hit the A button, and then Hit the A button again. Now that you're done that, go ahead and press the start button to reboot. So now we've loaded back up to the 3DS's home menu and changing the time within God mode causes our home system to change. So you can see I went from 1 a.m. to now it's 1048 all the way back in March. So we need to go into our system settings real quick and just change our clock back to normal. So inside of system settings, go ahead and go over to other settings and then hit the second one down, date and time. And today's date, we're gonna change real quick. So it is gonna go ahead and hit okay. And now I've gotta change the current time. And it is 124, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. Now we're gonna go back to the home menu and start updating FBI. 
Today's Ever Oasis theme was downloaded from themeplaza.eu and created by Ryu Maru. I'm going to go ahead and put a link to it in the description in case you thought it was pretty cool looking. You can see here this is the old FBI logo and this is what the new version looks like. Pretty cool. I think it looks a lot better. I like the different color of blue. It's a little bit less purple compared to this one. So if you want to go ahead and update FBI to 2.4.11, you can do that using a CIA version installed such as this, or you can use the homebrew version that I have inside of Nintendo 3DS Sound. The method of updating internally in FBI works for the 3DS X version as well as the CIA version. It does not work if you happen to have FBI injected into the health and safety app as I do right here. So I'm going to go ahead and launch my homebrew version of FBI and show you guys how to update. Here we are inside of FBI 2.410. Now, like I said, this update method is going to work if you're using the 3DS X version or the CIA version. So I'm going to go ahead and press up and it'll take me down to the bottom and it says update. Go ahead and press the A button. Go ahead and hit A again to check for FBI updates. And then it will download the latest update. It is finished. Hit continue. And now you can still see I'm on 2.410, but if I go ahead and close this and open it back up, relaunched into FBI from the homebrew launcher, and you can see I'm on 2.411 now. Now that your 3DS has the latest God Mode 9 as well as FBI, let's go see what's new with the Wii U. Over to Wii U News, Quark the Awesome has posted an explanation of how the potential weeb hacks might work. And this is the Crunchyroll exploit, essentially. So if you guys are interested in a, a little bit of a post explaining how that might work, then go ahead and click the link in the description and check that out. So up next is something pretty cool for 5.5.2 users. Basically, you can install HacksChi on 5.5.2 using your PC and a USB. This is kind of experimental and you do need an OTP as well as your CPROM are required. Now, you're going to have to have these when you were on 5.5.1. Now, unfortunately, none of my tutorials told us to dump anything like this and I'm terribly sorry for it. We really didn't think the Wii U was going to be getting any updates and there was no need to do something like that. If you happen to have a Red NAND, you could dump those files from there. And apparently if you don't have the OTP, you can take the OTP from someone else because they all use the same USB key. Now, as it says here, this tool is very experimental and use it at your own risk. Basically what you do is you get your USB and you format it so that it's clean and ready to go. And then you go into the eShop and you buy one of the supported DS Virtual Console games for HacksChi. You then go into the system settings and data management and move the game over to the USB. And then you're going to plug it into the computer, do some random stuff, and get the HacksChi installer going on it. And then when you connect the USB back to the Wii U and you run the game, Homebrew Launcher should go ahead and open. And now that you have Homebrew Launcher, you move the game back to the NAND and you reinstall HacksChi again with the regular Wii U installer. And that is essentially how you make a USB installation for HacksChi so that you can get the homebrew launcher on 5.5.2. It's pretty cool, but not a lot of people are going to have a CPROM.bin for this to work. But, you know, maybe you do. Go ahead and click the link in the description and check that out. In the near future here, I'm going to show you guys on 5.5.1 how we can dump those still just in case we ever need to do something like this in the future. Although we probably won't. It'll just make a decent video, I think. We're over here on Jam1 Garner's Twitter or Jamie Garner, I'm not too sure how you say that, sorry about that. And they have posted a finished Rob Chain exploit, which is basically just a proof of concept for gaining arbitrary code execution from Smash Brothers on the Wii U. Now this could potentially lead to a 5.5.2 exploit, allowing us to maybe boot into the homebrew launcher from Smash Bros. Something that is fairly interesting since a lot of people do have the game already. They could potentially find some sort of ability to execute the homebrew launcher for there or some sort of HaxG installer. Anything that could be useful to us. Very cool. We'll watch the video real quick here. So Jim is going ahead and changing the name of one of the characters. 
and then going ahead and loading up one of the CPUs, I believe. Now, they've chosen the random, and it has launched code execution. I'll put a link to the video in the description in case you want to check it out. It's not insanely interesting, but it's really cool to see. Up next is a tutorial over on GBA Temp for blocking Wii U system updates permanently without using a DNS or modifying anything on your router. Now this guide, it does modify your NAND, so I am not personally recommending anyone do this. I'm just allowing you to know that this exists and you could do it if you wanted to. If you follow this, you do make a NAND backup optionally, and so you would be okay. Basically, we're using an FTP client within Homebrew that allows us to modify the NAND, and there's a folder on our Wii U's NAND that is called Updates, and Updates is basically where your Wii U downloads any system updates to. And if you delete the system updates folder completely, your Wii U will never be able to download an update again. So that is essentially what this is about. Like I say, I do not recommend anyone doing this, but I'll put the link in the description if you wanted to check it out. Last up, this is a Save Me mod, which is an alternative to Save In, which required you to have a PC connected to your Wii U to send save files over to back them up. And Save Me strictly is a homebrew program used on your Wii U. And you can see this mod added some cool features. It can restore saves without issues, which Save Me had a little bit of a problem. Sometimes it wouldn't restore your saves. And if there's no save data, it will tell you to launch the game once and create it. That is super handy. Can show which backed up save slots are used or empty. Again, very useful. Now shows which device the game is stored on. So a USB or your NAND. And you can see the best thing is it now works with Cold Boot Hacks Chi and normal hacks chi without launching mocha so there you go i'm going to be having a tutorial on this save me mod very very soon and showing us how to do a couple of cool things with it so stay tuned for that that's this week in homebrew i hope you guys are now caught up on the latest 3ds and wii u homebrew news i will catch you guys next week Make sure you slam that thumbs up if you haven't already. If we can get this video up to 100 likes before tomorrow morning, then I'm going to upload another video tomorrow as well as do a live stream. If you guys want to see more, please go down to the comments and let me know. Probably should hit that subscribe button as well as we're coming up on 5,000 subs and it's getting out of hand. Much love. Peace. I'll see you guys soon.